In this tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to set colliders for different objects in your game or in your animation. Uh, what this is good for, especially, is weapons. And in this case, we're going to put a collider on the sword. So as he's swinging, it's going to come down and have a collider. So if there's other objects in our scene, in our game, uh, with colliders attached to them, this sword is going to interact with it and it'll fire back a function call that will let you trap it in, in your code logic. Now, um, colliders can be turned on and off just like textures so you don't have to have them on the whole animation which is really good because if he was just standing or walking around with a collider on he'd be hitting things and getting a lot of false readings which is not what we want we only want him to um, get a hit when he's actually moving the sword with intent to use it so in our attack animation i think the best place for the collider would probably be where it the sword changes into a swishing motion. So on this keyframe would probably be our best um, collider keyframe. So let's go over here, click on collider key. Now defaults to none. We're gonna switch this to box since that'll fit our sword better. And it brings up some options here. Now the first one is, uh, is this a trigger? In uh, Unity, if you're familiar with colliders in Unity, there's two types of uh, colliders. There's trigger colliders and there's collision colliders. The triggers, are just a registration of if something hits another thing then is it you know it fires that that trigger uh, if it's a collision if this is unchecked then a collision occurs and it actually performs physics on the other object and it moves it and gives you a little more precise information on its hit position it's a little more expensive computationally but uh, in a 2d world triggers would probably make more sense because you're not going to want a lot of physics going on it'd probably give you results that uh, don't make sense because it's in a 3d world uh, so these 2D uh, collider events should probably be triggers. Now the layer, if you're familiar also with the, the physics, the physic layers, let's go to that. We have a matrix here of what layers can collide with other layers. This prevents things like you hitting your allies. So if, if your allies are on a layer and your weapon is in a layer, you don't want those two to collide, so you wouldn't have a collision matrix uh, entry for those two. You'd probably just want your sword layer to be um, colliding with an enemy layer. So if I go back into this, we can tell our layer to use the animation layer, whatever layer we've set this knight. So if we had a knight layer set up, um, this collider would just inherit that layer. or can uncheck that and explicitly state what layer we want this collider to be on and that just gives you full control over how that collider interacts with other objects I'm going to just default it to the use animation so it's going to use whatever that knight is using so let's go ahead and set our collider it starts at zero zero size and you can see it's not there so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of guess it here um, if I click match texture size it's actually gonna make the collider for the full size which is not what we want because this, this image is actually really large because of the swoosh. So I'm going to change this, let's say 40 across. That's about the width of the sword. And maybe 120, 180 high. You can see it centers around the pivot of the sword, so we need to offset that a little bit. So if I set it to 120 offset and these dimensions, we get a nice collider that fits the sword. So it pretty much right on the sword. That's exactly what we want. So now the collider is on the whole time he's swinging the sword down. But we don't want it to continue to go to the end of the animation because it would continue to hit things. So we're going to take it off just like we took off the swoosh. We're going to take it off at this frame. So we'll pick a collider key and we'll switch it to none. So now any time after that it's going to be gone. So you see it comes on down and then goes off. Hit play. You can see it doing that. Now one thing we need to do before we script anything is put this back on once because attacking we just want it to do once, uh, not loop. So that's how to add colliders.